Hello and welcome back to the course on digital financial inclusion. In this section, we'll talk about informal tools or savings and we'll find out why the financially excluded people or who do not have better access to financial services actually save in informal tools. So let's look at what are those uh, informal tools where people save in. So first one being friends and relatives, which means that these people actually trust their friends and relatives more than any formal ecosystem. And second, that they also want a, a, a liquidity into their savings or into deposit products. So in case if they need uh, money, they can actually ask uh, from their relatives and friends. In most of the cases, uh, they get uh, the money returned. Uh, because they trust them more and everybody is living in the same society and community so they, they definitely do not want to pick up a fight or say a bad relationship with someone else which is who is living in the same ecosystem but in few of the cases where a few it may, might be a case that few of the friends and relatives turns hostile and say that okay i do not have your money and then uh, they actually end up losing we have cases where uh, such things have happened in different parts of the world then people also uh, save with shopkeepers. So what they do is that they are daily wage earner, they are earning money instead of going to a formal banking financial system, ecosystem or to a business cost funded agent or to a mobile money agent, which is like father space. And second, that there is a transaction fee to deposit money to the bank account. What they do is that they keep money with any uh, informally with any shopkeeper. And whenever they are going back home, they collect that money from the shopkeeper. So that also happens that um, uh, these people actually keep some amount of money, $10, $20 or whatever they save on a daily basis or a monthly basis to shopkeeper. And in terms, shopkeeper give them some uh, interest as well. For example, $1, $2, whatever, or a few cents, totally depending on what they have agreed on. So that is also an informal system that works. Uh, third one is an employer. So if, you are a, if, if a person is a daily wage earner, what they do is that they they say that, okay, you give me a wage, uh, you give me the wage uh, in one go and keep all the money with or whatever I have earned. Uh, what, what they do is that they keep the money with their employer and whenever they are going back or whenever they have a good amount of money, they carry that cash to the nearest, say, BC point or to uh, a mobile money agent or to any bank branch. And then they send that money or remit that money to their to, to people in their uh, native places. So that also happens. Then they also f um, save in an informal group where they're like uh, similar uh, people with similar community, or I would say similar um, work uh, lifestyle or working in the similar kind of a condition. They come together and say that, okay, let's create an informal saving group in which uh, what will happen that every week the, 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 the treasurer will change. So if uh, in this week I have saved, uh, keep, kept the money for the entire group, next time he will keep. Or what the other person can also do is that they collect the entire money and then go to the bank branch uh, and then deposit into the respective bank accounts or send money to a specific bank account. So that those are also informal plus a bit of formal savings as well. Then uh, another form informal system which is very much I would say uh, is used across I would say globe will be uh, uh, saving the cash uh, under the mattress or uh, under the pillow or in uh, say in the cupboard or in, in any kind of a um, kind of an informal place where you want to kind of store some cash and then another is a piggy bank where where you can just put in some uh, currencies uh, some loose currency there and uh, whenever you want the money you can just kind of open it up or you just break it and then you collect the money so those things are actually very much popular and I have seen that few, few people what they do is that instead of uh, storing cash what they do is that whenever you go to some part of the world uh, especially in India what they do is that uh, they actually buy bricks and goats and what they do is that they buy they they purchase that brick and they keep it outside their house and they sell it sell the brick to another person whenever there is a construction which is happening so instead of storing money in cash which 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 can be easily stolen they actually store in a different uh, a commodity which could be a brick or could be a goat or could be any other livestock as well so even those things can become a commodity like people uh, save in gold, these people actually uh, save in another kind of, uh, I would say, a commodity, which is also, uh, which is like a brick, uh, which is used in the construction of a building or in a house. So those things are uh, also an informal uh, commodity-based saving, which uh, these people do. And another, and the last one is social safety net. It is very much important. What I found out when I was traveling to some part of the uh, rural uh, India, they said that, okay, um, whenever I, I have some surplus money, what I do is that I find out someone in my own society or community who is in the need of some money. Now, say example, if that person needs a 
uh, for certain thing and if i have 10 dollar what i will do is that i will give him 10 dollar uh, because in, in in what happens is that by giving them him 10 dollar actually i am obliging him or her that whenever even if i need say 20 dollar 30 dollar at some point of time the person will help me with 30 dollars not with 10 dollars definitely he, he or she has to return me 10 dollars but then since he or she is also obliged because I helped him or her into the necessary or in an emergency condition. Hence, he or she will give me $30 back. And so, hence, uh, he posed me a question that which formal ecosystem or which formal financial system will give me that benefit that I put in $10 right now. And if I need, say, uh, $100 after a certain point of time, uh, the formal financial system will only give me the fixed uh, deposit interest rate or saving interest rate. But here what is happening is that the interest becomes the obligation of the person because I have helped him or her in case of emergency. So now if he or she is not able to give me $100, now it is the obligation of that person to find out other resources and help me to uh, arrange $100 for me. So that is called social safety net and that is a very important concept into rural people, into that community uh, which stays together and kind of help each other. So that is an amazing concept and that is actually near to impossible in a formal ecosystem um, because you, you are obviously a formal ecosystem or a final, formal financial system will not, uh, will not be able to support an uh, individual to that extent. Uh, without charging a hefty interest or rate of interest and uh, they will consider that as a loan. So uh, these are different uh, informal tools in which uh, these people would li uh, like to save and uh, they consider it more safer than a formal ecosystem. So it is important for us to understand because if we have to design a financial inclusion product around saving, we need to understand the psychology that why do they consider a piggy bank to be safer than a bank? or say a shopkeeper to be more secured than a mobile money agent or say a social safety net to be more secured than any other banking point or mobile money agent. So once we understand the psychology around it and the tools are being used by them, we can actually replicate or kind of, uh, kind of create a similar product so that it has the feature of these informal tools but is also helping them to become, to save into a formal ecosystem. So uh, those were the different informal tools in which they save. In the next section, we'll talk about few of the formal tools in which um, uh, many people actually save uh, from the same community. And uh, we, will we will talk about what are those to tools and what are the benefits of that. So see you in the next section. Till the time, take care and think about FinTech for inclusion. Thank you.